What is going on today guys? Welcome back today. Today I do believe that we are actually taking a break from the Peterbilt, but uh, that isn't going to stop me from trying to get some supplies that we need. Uh, we are also waiting on a bunch of like hardware related stuff to kind of take it to the next step uh, in order to mount the tanks, the battery boxes. I've got some nice hardware ordered up in the correct sizes. So we are waiting for that. I believe that should be in tomorrow. So we'll jump back on it. But in the meantime, I went ahead and took apart uh, some of the fuel lines. We are going to be replacing all of the fuel lines from the tanks, uh, the returns all the way to the front. These lines, as you can see, they're kind of rusty. Uh, they're really, really brittle, and I'm assuming that they might be actually original. So now that we're moving the tanks towards the back, I'm not going to try and reuse the hose lengths that went here and try and put them here. We're just going to run all new fresh lines. So we went ahead and took apart some of these T's, these junction blocks, and we're going to try and go try. Key, key word is we are going to try. Hopefully this is not a wild goose chase. Uh, we're going to try and get all new lines, all new fittings so we can replace that when we do actually mount the tanks. That way we're not waiting on that. Also, also we are going to be picking up some material for something else. Uh, I do not believe that is going to fit in the smart car. So uh, a little bit of a field trip first thing this morning. And then I do believe what we're gonna be doing is going inside the shop and seeing if I think is what, if, if, if the problem that I know we are having is what's actually causing it to sound funny while it's running. So I do know of one problem uh, that we need to fix and correct. Um, so we're gonna try and do that and then restart it up and see where the night leads us. So first step up, field trip. All right, first stop, metals and more. Picking up some steel. What could we need steel for? Maybe to pick some things up, put some things down, maybe? Man, is that an old Dodge in the dry? What is that? Oh, it's a Chevro Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Stop number one, loaded up and done. Let's go see if we can find some fuel lines and fittings. Metal yard trip is done. All right, so you're probably wondering what happened to the second stop. Why are we back at the house? Well, first thing you should probably always remember to do, I'm sure everyone has done this. Oh, hey, look, these are the samples that I wanted to bring. So when I tell people what I need, this is like, oh, okay, I know what you need. So yeah, step number one, uh, don't forget to put the stuff in your truck that you're trying to show people. Well, at least we're home now. So anyway, let me show you what the first stop was. First stop was uh, we ordered some fork extension material. This is five by three. Uh, may have went a little crazy on the wall thickness. It's quarter wall, but you know, you just gotta eat your Wheaties before you pick them up. So obviously we got uh, we got a full length stick, uh, 24 foot. I just had them cut it in half so I could fit it in my truck. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if we're gonna make the fork extensions uh, six feet or seven feet. Um, I think the sleeper on the uh, Pete, I believe is six feet. But who knows, we might just go, uh, you know, a foot for extra measure. You know, a little little extra length never uh, never hurt anybody. Am I, am I right? Am I right? But <laughs> anyway, we got, I'm sorry, too much, too much sauce on that one probably. Anyway, we got more material because I want to make another attachment for the forklift to pick up trailers. Uh, I know everyone is going to say, why did you not just kind of like cut a hole in one of your forks and put a ball in it like that? That might be a little easier. Well... You know what, it's one extra step to hook up an attachment, it's a little bit extra time to make the attachment, but I really don't feel like putting a hole in those forks. Those forks are uh, actually really nice, in really nice shape, and I don't wanna, I, I wanna be able to pick up the big, the big trailers, 
and I don't want to bend a fork either. So we're going to make an attachment that kind of uh, encompasses uh, both the forks and kind of slides on, dis distributes the weight a little bit better. So that's what we're doing. That's why we kind of got the extra material. And you want to know, you want to know, you want to know something really funny. On the way over here, I was about to call Allie and I'm like, hey, like when you when I get home, like come run out, help me unload this stuff real quick. But <laughs> why would I have someone come lift this by hand when uh, when we actually have, you know, Frank Frank over here, Frank the fork truck? We we can just go we can just go pick it up we can go pick it up with the forklift and not worry about breaking our back. And if we're smart enough with where the fork extensions get put, we can probably just drive right up to them and pick them up. We, we probably don't even need to handle them to come to think of it. So anyway, let's get these unloaded and then we'll go do our second stop and see if we can't get some fuel lines and fittings and stuff. This is just, uh, it's just another, another reason that sometimes getting the supplies for the job actually takes more time than doing the actual job. Stop number two. Here we go. Let's turn the AC back on. It's getting hot again. Surprisingly enough, so obviously the uh, fuel line is uh, like black nylon braided hose. Um, I think it's a little bit different than the stuff I use on, or we use on the smaller trucks. I'm not exactly sure, but I went to two different places this morning. One was Fleet Pride, and the other one was like a Truck Pro, and they both didn't carry the uh, the fuel line that we needed. So, whoa, hey, getting a little, getting a little gangster up in the air, but, um, so now we're going to Bowling Green Rubber and Gasket, which uh, hopefully we'll have what we need. And I'm looking for those lines that we have. Oh, I need to put my seatbelt on. I know you guys are gonna yell about my seatbelt. I need to actually get, uh, all right, we're buckled in now, we're buckled in. What I need to do is get reusable ends so I can make the exact lengths that I want. So hopefully they have that stuff. Maybe I'm looking for something that's not quite right in the uh, big truck world, but whew, it's getting hot. It is getting hot, boys. Can you see me? I'm sweating. All right, stop number two. Turn that down. Let's see if we can't get some fittings and lines. All right, way too much money later. We have got all of the hose and fittings that we need to fix up the Pete's fuel system. We are back. We have got all of our nice high quality fuel line here. And we have got all of our fittings. Oh yeah, nice reusable ends so we can make them without a crimp. All of our adapters. So we are all set and ready to make some fuel lines. All right guys, that is enough running around. We are back in the shop. We are getting ready to start working on the 08. Now let me show you exactly what we found in the top end in the valve train here that is definitely a problem uh, now what i would consider this is a perfect example of two aftermarket parts clashing uh, in combination with each other. Now, each one of those things separately uh, is designed within a certain specification, within a certain set of parameters. Now, when you get two aftermarket pieces that are jiving together, that is what I would call this, and this is why this is happening. Now, uh, the cylinder head itself and everything that goes along with that, zero issues. Uh, the uh, fleece, some of the fleece valve train parts that are in this uh, absolutely zero problems. What has happened is, and again, I don't know if this is exactly the reason why the engine sounds like this, but uh, it's definitely valve train, I believe, related. So uh, at the end of the day, we're gonna, at the end of the night here, we're gonna start this thing again and hopefully it sounds completely different and everything is good. That's the only thing that we can actually see. So 
We went through, we checked everything, we rechecked valve lash again, we checked to make sure all of the rocker bridges, the push rods, everything was good. So everything checked out good, no uh, installation errors. Now what we found after trying to pull some of this apart is if you look right here on the intake bridge right here and you get up real close to the exhaust rocker, What's happening is the actual rocker housing is coming in contact with this bridge. Like this has actually got tension on it. I cannot even get this off right now. I could if I really tried prying really, really hard, but I'm not. So we took one back down here. We actually, we went to go take some push rods out and just double check everything. And then uh, I went to go make sure that this was still on here. I'm like, man, I can't even move that off. So uh, found it on sheer, just kind of taking stuff apart. but. That is hitting right there. Now, again, this head's been installed on other trucks before, obviously, but they may not have had the fleece bridges on it. It could be stock bridges. Stock bridges have a much different profile to them. Um, so again, under completely stock parameters, cylinder head is doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, the bridges under uh, different cylinder head doing exactly what they're supposed to do, no issues. We are very, very, very close. Now, obviously, um, I can actually still turn the engine over, uh, so it's not like they are binding to the, to the point of stopping, but they are binding enough to uh, definitely have some type of issue. So uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to take everything apart and do a little clearancing on the actual rockers. They don't need a lot. We're just gonna kind of kiss them a little bit and then see if that does anything um, and then we'll go from there. So uh, the other thing that I, and again, this is my mistake. Is this, is, this is a little bit, and, and I'm hoping that by me being completely transparent with you guys that you guys learn from some of the things that I may or may not have done. Um, so. It's important to always make sure you take your time and you don't put things together just for the sake of uh, getting them done and getting them together. So if you look at this uh, trunnion and rocker assembly, you can see this, this moves really, really nicely. Like I, I barely got to put any tension on it to move this. This is supposed to be free and moving nicely inside here. Now this one that we took off, you can see. It's not doing that. It's a little, it's a little sticky in there. So what we're gonna do, and this actually came in some of the Manton valve train for the billet engine, is we're gonna take this red Scotch Brite and this little twirly, twirly McBird uh, and go ahead and clean this up in here um, and clean everything out. They weren't all like this, but I do remember some going in just a little bit tighter than others. And instead of me actually doing this ahead of time, I was like, eh. They'll self-clearance themselves, it's no big deal, right? That's not the, that's not the approach I should have taken. So uh, again, the, doing that kind of stuff, you're always gonna do it again uh, and sooner than you want to. So uh, we're gonna take apart the entire uh, valve train. The push rods can stay in, uh, but we're gonna take all of the rocker bridges out. We're gonna make sure they're all good, cleaned out, smoothed out, make sure they're uh, rotating freely, and then clearance all of the exhaust rockers where they are kissing that. I'm gonna put it all back together and uh, hopefully we have a smooth running engine with no issues um, and we'll go from there. So that's it. I know a little long-winded but explaining exactly what's going on takes a little bit of time. We have broken everything down, assessed the situation, kind of got a grasp on what we need to do. We've only got to actually hone out and fix or smooth out one, two, and three rockers. Uh, those were the only three that are tight, otherwise they are all spinning very, very freely. So three of them got overlooked. Now, if you don't really get the uh, whole how these are supposed to feel, they're supposed to drop in, once you get them square doing this with one hand, they're supposed to drop in and drop right out, just like that. You'll be able to drop them in and have them go right out. That's how free that they should be. So if they're not that smooth, you need to kind of do a little bit of this. So um, we're going to fix that up. And here's just a little bit better look at 
the nicking that was going on, if it's ever gonna focus. Come on, baby. It's too shiny. Too shiny. All right, so all we're really gonna do is just uh, hit that a little bit, smooth that out. Plenty of meat there to just take a little bit out. Should be good to go. We'll put it back together, fire this baby up. What we're gonna do, just gonna fold this like this. Stick that in like so. Hit your drill, just like that. Oh, oh, pulled out too far. All right, and if you guys can see that, now we got a nice smooth surface. Obviously make sure you guys clean these out extremely, extremely well. But that should do the trick. That should free us up. Make sure you got your oiling holes clear. We'll be good to go. We are back together and ready to fire this thing up. Everything is lubed up. Got a whole bunch of Amsoil assembly lube up in there. Rockers are good. Everything is torqued down. Everything looks to be good. Uh, rotated over by hand multiple, multiple times, checking the clearance. Uh, everything looks good, so fingers crossed that we should be good. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave the uh, top valve cover off. You can't actually start the truck like this. It doesn't splash oil everywhere, so this is a nice way to kind of take a look at everything, and make sure everything's getting oil, make sure everything's moving. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, we're going to fire this thing up. All right, here we go. exactly what it's supposed to sound like that that is good so now that was in good shape that was definitely our problem that sounds perfectly normal a slight thumping coming from the intake with no intercooler on completely completely normal uh, but it is now running completely smooth inside before the whole truck was shaking it was running bad and uh, really oh there's bugs in here goodness gracious uh, anyway so we're good uh, we're good extremely extremely happy we can now button everything up, do our first hot retorque, one more step further to kind of getting this thing out of the garage. It's my, I need to do something with, with, with this up here. But anyway, super pumped, super happy. Um, we can now continue on putting this thing back together, getting this thing dialed in. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people like to call it rambling, but hopefully some of this helps you guys uh, that is the main goal, obviously, with everything to try and help you guys um, not run into some of these pitfalls. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. That is where I'm going to wrap it up for this evening. Uh, we lost all of our daylight to kind of move this thing outside uh, to get this thing outside. So hopefully this, this truck is going to be outside within the next couple days, which makes me extremely happy as well. So uh, that's it. Give this video a big thumbs up if you guys are pumped to see this thing back running. She's 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 going she's going to be good. We haven't even thrown we haven't even thrown the uh, new spicy tuna in it yet. So once we get that going, we'll be ripping in no time. So thank you guys, appreciate it. I will see you guys tomorrow. See you.